Woodlice are terrestrial isopods from the suborder Onyschidea. Woodlice are distributed worldwide and are found in various ecosystems ranging from deserts to forests. Of the 5,000 species of woodlice in the world, 36 species can be found in the Netherlands. Woodlice play an important role in ecosystems as decomposers. They are able to digest cellulose, contribute to soil development and disperse and stimulate the activity of microbiota needed in decomposition processes. Research of the Venadol has shown that most woodlice species display characteristic grouping behavior, known as aggregation. Aggregation involves large numbers of individuals congregating together into a certain location or shelter in close vicinity of each other. Aggregation is a social process which results in a number of costs and benefits. The costs of living in a group include spread of parasites and diseases, as well as competition for resources. While the benefits include reduced predation pressure, coping with abiotic stresses and access to resources. For woodlice in particular, aggregation has the added advantage of reducing individual water loss. It's still unclear whether the spatial distribution of woodlice is more determined by preference for grouping or by preference for shelter. Based on this, we formulated the research. Field experiment 1, group size versus shelter size. The aim of this experiment was to investigate whether there is a correlation between shelter size and woodlice aggregation size. In order to do so, we visited a number of gardens in Wageningen and Bennekom. There, we lifted plant pots and counted the number of woodlice present underneath. The data recorded was the number of woodlice found under each pot, the diameter of the pot to determine the surface area under the pot, the material of the pot and the substrate the pot was standing on. We also took a photograph for later analysis if necessary. Furthermore, woodlice were collected for later use in lab experiments. We hypothesized that the size of woodlice aggregates is positively correlated with shelter size. A correlation analysis of the data would later be performed. As illustrated in the graph, we expected larger groups and a larger shelter. And here are the results. This graph shows the surface area of pots in centimeters on the x-axis and the number of woodlice on the y-axis. We predicted that there would be more woodlice under larger garden pots. However, this was not the case. We performed a statistical analysis in SPSS. The data was not normally distributed, so we had to perform non-parametric tests. Firstly, we explored the data using a Spearman's rank test. This indicated that there was no significant correlation. Field Experiment 2 – Forest Cluster Analysis The aim of this experiment was to investigate whether woodlice form aggregates in apparently shelterless areas. In order to do so, we randomly selected open floor patches in the Oostereng Forest near Wageningen. We placed a 1 by 1 meter grid which consisted of 100 compartments of 10 by 10 centimeters in size onto the ground. The leaf litter, first centimeter of soil and any other contents of each compartment were removed and analyzed. The data recorded was the number of woodlice present in each compartment, the location of that compartment within the grid as well as the forest location. Furthermore, the weather conditions and time of day were recorded. We hypothesized that woodlice form aggregates in unsheltered forest patches. The data was to be processed in a semi-variance analysis. 
While we could not predict the exact form of the curves, we did predict a cluster distribution of wood lice. This, predi this prediction is illustrated in the semivariogram, which relates the semivariance, or dissimilarity of locations, to the distance that separates them. Unfortunately, the number of woodlice found in open forest areas was insufficient to perform any statistical analyses, so no conclusions can be drawn and the experiment had to be abandoned. Here, Cindy and Marietta are determining which species we have. We used the 1993 book Woodlice Keys and Notes for Identification of the Species by Oliver and Michian and a microscope. Here are the results. 28 sample woodlice were taken from the 400 individuals that we collected to identify which species are present in the surroundings of Wageningen. We found 9 species out of the 36 species which exist in the Netherlands. Lab Experiment 1 – Shelter Preferences This experiment aims to investigate whether woodlice have a preference for sheltering in groups. Furthermore, it seeks to answer the question, at what group size does group behavior in terms of sheltering occur? In order to do so, we designed a manipulative, fully factorial, randomized design, with one factor, namely group size, and two levels of that factor, namely 10 and 20 individuals. The distribution of woodlice among two equal shelters was taken as an indication for their social preferences. The experiment was set up as follows. A circular arena of around 30 centimeters in diameter. The arena was placed on a clean sheet of paper which is exchanged between each trial. There are two equally sized shelters of tree bark and a removable enclosure containing a group of either 10 or 20 woodlice. The woodlice were kept in the removable enclosure for five minutes to calm down prior to being released into the arena. After release, the woodlice were monitored for 15 minutes. The data to record included the number of woodlice under each shelter as well as the number of unsheltered woodlice at the end of the trial. We also recorded whether or not one of the shelters was preferred by the majority. The temperature of the experimental area was also recorded. We hypothesized that woodlice form aggregates or groups with more individuals than could be expected to occur through random distribution. We expect this to be the case for both the small group of 10 individuals and the large group of 20 individuals. This is illustrated in the graph, in which blue bars indicate the majority of woodlice grouping under one shelter. And here are the results. First we checked if the left and right shelter could be considered the same and did not form a bias in this experiment. The data was normally distributed so we performed a paired samples t-test for each of the test arenas. There was no significant difference in preference for the two shelters in either arena, thus there is no bias and the shelters can be considered as equal. 
This graph shows the woodlice preference for groups of 10 and 20 woodlice. From visual inspection, it seems that woodlice prefer to shelter than to remain free. We test for a difference in preference for sheltering between the two groups of 10 and 20 individuals and found a significant difference. This means that at a larger group size of 20 individuals, there is a greater preference for sheltering than at the smaller group size of 10 individuals. Here we take a closer look at the grouping behavior of woodlice that did shelter during the experiment. This graph shows that the majority of woodlice aggregate together in one shelter, then deemed the winning shelter. To see which factors influence the grouping behavior, we carried out a binary logistic regression. The first factor is shelter, which means the total number of woodlice which seek shelter. According to the results, this has a significant effect on grouping behavior. The second factor is winning, which means the total number of woodlice in the winning shelter. This also had a significant effect on individual preference for the winning shelter. The final factor is group, which is the total number of woodlice in the trial. This does not have a significant effect on individual woodlouse preference for joining the winning shelter. Finally, we investigated the size of the winning aggregate and compared this between the two group sizes. This graph shows that the average winning aggregate size consists of around 75% of the total woodlice. There is no significant difference in winning aggregate size for the different group sizes. For the results that turned out to be significant in this lab experiment, a power analysis was carried out with the Java Power Applet. The power was 0 0.5897, which is not sufficient. To obtain a power of at least 0 0.8, a minimum of 32 replications would have been necessary. Lab Experiment 2 – Individual Preference for Group versus Shelter This experiment aims to investigate the preference of individual woodlice for either sheltering alone or being part of an unsheltered group. In order to do so, a manipulative, randomized design was set up with one factor namely group size, and two levels of that factor, namely 10 and 20 individuals per group. Again we used the circular arena of around 30 centimeters in diameter. The arena was placed on a clean sheet of paper which was exchanged between each trial. There was a choice between a shelter of tree bark and a group of woodlice of either 10 or 20 individuals trapped inside a mesh. Pencil boundaries were drawn around the trap group and the shelter for recording purposes. This did not appear to influence the behavior of the woodlouse beam. There was a removable enclosure which contained an individual woodlouse for five minutes to calm down prior to being released into the arena. After release, the woodlouse was monitored for 15 minutes. The data to be recorded was a tally mark for group or shelter. Whenever the woodlouse remained within the boundaries of the shelter or the group for more than 15 seconds, this was recorded as a tally mark. These were later det counted to determine preference. The temperature of the area was also recorded and the light conditions kept as constant as possible between the trials. We hypothesized that woodlice would prefer sheltering alone over joining an unsheltered group, as we expect the benefits of, shel of the shelter to outweigh those of joining a group in this case. We expect this preference for shelter to de decrease slightly at larger group sizes. This is illustrated in the graph. And here are the results. 
We first investigated whether individual woodlice had a preference for joining an unsheltered group or for sheltering alone. The results are illustrated in the graph. On the x-axis are the preferences that could be expressed, either group, shelter or no preference. On the y-axis is the number of trials in which one of the options was preferred over the others. We performed a binomial test from which we can conclude that woodlice significantly prefer shelter. We then investigated whether the group size of the trapped woodlice influenced the preference of an individual woodlouse. The results are illustrated in the graph. On the x-axis are the two choices, group or shelter. On the y-axis are the number of trials in which one of the two choices was preferred. We can see that when 10 woodlice were trapped, illustrated by the blue bar, the group was never preferred over the shelter. When 20 woodlice were trapped, illustrated by the green bar, the group was preferred only once. We performed a binary logistic regression from which we can conclude that there is no significant difference in preference for the group between the two group sizes. In this graph you see the p-value on the y-axis and the number of replicates on the x-axis. As the graph shows, a minimum of 9 replicates are needed to gain a p-value below 0.05. We therefore achieved a sufficient power in this experiment. Yeah. Past research has indicated the involvement of a social component in the aggregation behavior of woodlice. Our research has partly confirmed this finding. In summary, we found no correlation between shelter size and group size. There was also no relationship between pot material, underlying surface and group size. Yeah. Woodlice social preference is likely to be influenced by the trade-off between the costs and the benefits of joining a group versus sheltering alone. Future research could further investigate the social components which influence grouping behavior in woodlice and other creatures and examine how this works in the wild. In conclusion, we can say that woodlice do experience peer pressure when selecting a shelter. However, when choosing between shelter and a group, individuals will prefer to shelter. Thank you.